So today I'm going to walk through a patch uh, that isn't really about this awesome synth sound, but rather what's powering it, which I think is a really useful utility that some of you uh, may want to employ in other patches. So this is really a utility patch. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a talking video, but the way I'm hoping to break this down is to explain what the utility is and how you can use it, and then for people who want to uh, learn a little bit more about how it's made, I'll try to walk through the sort of mechanism. So the idea here is that this is a proportionate mixer, and what I mean by that is that <coughs> you can set up uh, probabilities for various things. There are two different versions in this patch. The first one is designed around clock divisions. So you can set up a probability for a certain clock division. Uh, right now they're ordered with quarter note, dotted eighth, eighth, dotted sixteenth, and sixteenth notes. Um, and then I also have another proportionate mixer for notes. And this one, just by default, but you can rearrange everything, is on an A minor scale. Um, and right now the notes that are highlighted are the uh, octaves and fifths. So what I mean by a proportionate mixer is that let's say you want to have um, more quarter notes than eighth notes. What this does is it takes all of these, I've labeled them probability, you could think of them as proportions, it takes all of these uh, values and it averages them together and determines uh, the likelihood that a certain probability will come up proportionate to one another. So the easiest way to explain this is I'm going to take the dotted eighth probability down. Right now, the probability of a quarter note and an eighth note is the same, but I can change that. by lowering this value, it'll average this. So now there's roughly a, I don't know, 20, 30% chance of a quarter note. And I can change that ratio by lowering the value for the eighth note. And I could throw in a couple of dotted eighths every now and then have a lot of 16th notes. And as I lower the values for other positions, the 16th notes will become even more prominent. Okay. Return to the original setting. The way the way that this works with notes is the same. Uh, so again, we have 16 possibilities here. I built it to have the maximum convenient number of possibilities. But if you only want to use four notes, you just send the probability down to a smaller amount. So again, I said right now it's set to play. Uh, you know, the octaves and fifths at the same amount. Um, but we can add in other notes. So here's some fourths. And some sixths. And this is kind of high pitch, so let's bring it down. Let's add a couple of seconds. And we 
can eliminate the octaves entirely. So this is particularly interesting, I think, in the context of generative music. Um, if you watch the live stream about generative music that, that we did uh, about a week ago, one of the comments that came up and one of the, the difficult things to do in Zoya by default is to sort of emphasize a root note. Um, because, you know, if you send a random module through a uh, quantizer, the chance of the root and the fourth and the seventh being played becomes mostly equal. Um, one of the things that I talked about doing, and this is still, a, I think, a useful alternative, is to have a switch where different values were weighted um, so that you could have a certain note connected three times and another one connected twice and another one connected once so that as you randomly switched between those, uh, uh, the note that's connected three times is more likely to come up. But um, the, the difference here, and this takes the same idea, right? It's about weighting different chances or choices. Uh, the difference here is that this is flexible. So unlike the switch where I'd have to go and reconnect everything if I wanted to change around those weights, uh, I can... just change the value of, of their proportion. Um, and so, you know, it's really easy to program in the sort of emphases you want. If you hear something, you go, oh, it's playing the sixth too often, you can change that. Um, or, you know, if you want to program in, uh, you know, a certain set of notes that you want to move between just a melody, um, you know, you can set those up here. Um, so in terms of using this patch, the thing to keep in mind is that you would want to import these pages and the two parts are kind of their own thing. So you select all of these and import them at once so that their connections were maintained. Um, and then the other important thing to keep in mind is that by default, there's an LFO clocking the patch, but you might want to use a, uh, you know, a clock from your modular or a MIDI clock or, or whatever. Um, the, the LFO comes in, I've tried to label this page. No, I haven't, whoops. Uh, with, on the same page as the, the division sections, the tap, uh, the clock divider sections, um, switch. Uh, so look for the switch. And then you would need to replace where that clock goes to. So it goes to these clock dividers. And that's what, you know, you can change these around too. Like I said, they're set to different divisions that correspond to different notes, but you can get some really interesting results by going uh, way off script. Um, I figured, as opposed to the notes, about five different clock divisions or, or note lengths is really what you need and want um, for these purposes. So the output, well, I'll come back to that. Um, so if you're just taking that, the, the output for this goes into a random module here that, that is used to select between these different proportionate values. Um, and you'd want to maintain that if you're, if you're using this to sort of clock itself, which is the way that it works now. But anyhow, if you wanted to use a MIDI clock or CV clock, uh, replace the LFO with um, that at these connections. Uh, for the 
note one, right now I have the clock coming from that same randomly generated, um, you know, uh, clock division thing where, where we have different note lengths. But if you wanted to use, again, a MIDI clock or uh, a CV clock or any other clock device, um, it makes selections based on uh, this random in. You know, so both of them use random values. You could try LFOs and other things because you'll get different results. You'll have, you know, different notes emphasized at different ends of the LFO. And if we ran that through a quantizer, you know, we get sort of a steady progression of, you know, A, B, C, D. But if we run it through this, we could rearrange those notes because, again, these things can just be arbitrarily changed to whatever you want. Um, but that's how you would sort of reappropriate this patch. And I've tried to label the pages. I've certainly labeled them so you can see the two different parts of the patch. Uh, I've tried to label them for, for other purposes. I did include uh, on this patch um, on the note division part, a, a clock a gate length. Uh, um, so that's a control you might want to look at. Uh, the output of that clock is, is through the switch. And in both cases, the output, there are switches, they're labeled, they have their own pages. Uh, the switch is where the, the notes come out. So that's what you would want to connect to your own oscillator or to send out over MIDI or, or whatever. Um, so that's how you use the patch. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how it's constructed just because I think it's interesting. And also because this is a concept that I wanted to employ for a very long time, but couldn't figure out how to do. Um, so, you know, maybe this is inspiring or useful or whatever, because it shows, I mean, the, the solution turned out to be a lot simpler than I was making it out to be. And I think that's the takeaway I, I give is that, you know, like, first of all, um, Sometimes things are, are frustrating and that's fine. And sometimes the answers are, are a little bit simpler than you think and you need to sort of step down. So the real, uh, I'm gonna mostly show this through the clock divider one. They work in roughly the same way. The clock divider one's just a little bit simpler because of the way that I put the controls and for the note one and um, but if you look at the output of these probabilities, they're connected progressively to, and this one's not connected at all, to comparators. They're connected to the negative input of comparators. If we look at those connections, they're all the same. Uh, this one is 19.99%, and that number is arrived at because we have five different uh, conditions. Right. The other one, if you look at it, it's a much smaller percentage because we're dividing instead of by five, we're dividing by 16. So <clears throat> this goes this one goes into the negative uh, input of all of the comparators and they again progressively go like this. So what happens is that they're added together. Right. Um, so if this is set to to a certain amount, and this is set to a certain amount, that amount on this probability influences this, this negative comparator input as well. Um, and then the output of the comparators is sent to the switch, uh, and it's sent at a number that is the total number of options uh, minus or one divided by the total number of options minus one. So what that does is it causes each of the comparators that goes high to move the switch to a different position. Okay. Uh, the other thing that the 
these values do is they all connect to a multiplier to this just once. Uh, I guess that's obvious, but all to the same multiplier input and they're connected at the same strength they're connected to at the uh, negative inputs of the, the comparators. And what's happening there, basically, is that these probability amounts rescale the incoming CV from the random module and they send it back out to the input of the comparators. And so if we have a value that is um, below 19.999, uh, this rescaling when it comes back will, will uh, have the comparator go low and this switch will go to the first option. Um, and then, you know, as it goes higher, it chooses different options. Right now we only have two things going, but we'll see. And if we change around these options, So if these are all set to zero, if you look at the uh, negative input of the comparators, this negative input has the same amount. So when it goes above 0 0.20, it'll just jump to the next comparator, uh, which is the next switch in the line. Um, and that's why the rescaling is important, because this puts a, a maximum amount uh, that these could be uh, you know, have value sent to, but we get 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 at all of these because they're set to zero. If we change one of these to something else, we get 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and there's a jump. Uh, and this also gets rescaled. So basically what it does is it, it sends that random value through these comparators, and the comparators set up different sections, right, uh, for checks. And if it checks in one section, it moves on to sort of the next section and they're, they're cumulative, which is what drives the switch. Um, anyhow, this took me a really long time to figure out because I wanted to do something like this for the Zebu factory patches and I, I couldn't get it right. So the other side of this particular one um, just in case someone's going through this patch and wondering why. Uh, so the clock goes to clock dividers, and then the clock dividers go to uh, LFOs that are set to, uh, I'm sorry, the clock dividers go to tap to CV converters, and then they go to LFOs, um, and the LFOs have a uh, phase reset input. And they're phase reset by the output of the switch. So, you know, if, if a certain division is selected, it'll have a high and low part. By the next time it comes to its high part, it will uh, reset the LFOs and it'll also trigger this random value to pick another output so that all the LFOs are sort of starting at the right place, depending on you know, because they get out of phase otherwise. Um, and the reason why this is the way that it is uh, here is because the phase reset, you could say it's a bug. I've said it's a bug. I've reported it as a bug. Uh, but the phase reset for clocked LFOs will um, be re-triggered by the clock input. Uh, so if you have a clocked LFO, it'll treat every new incoming clock beat as a, a reset condition. Um, so you need to put the LFOs as tappable so they don't have that tap input interfering with how they behave. Um, so again, you know, the, 
this one uses the same mechanism. I've just moved the value modules to this control page to make things simpler. Um, on this one, the, the output of the LFOs goes to this switch. Uh, and on this one, what we have are these different note values. And if we move one of them out, they're all layered on top of one another. So the outputs are, are hidden. It goes to a switch as well. Uh, and then these probabilities in the same way as the other uh, version select between those different switch positions. So again, I think this is a really valuable tool if you want to, to dig into this. It's a little bit expensive computationally, um, but at the same time, if it's what you're looking for, that this is what does that. Um, you know, and I think you could uh, definitely, first of all, save some CPU by just wiping out this demo voice, which again is not like awesome work. I'm using the push button here, but I also put a push button there for anyone who's using it on uh, a Zoya without this, this Euro uh, push button module. Um, you know, all that's doing is just switching the connection from the ADSR to the VCA on and off. Uh, and then I added, um, if you want to look at this, this is a probability gate that I added uh, just because I didn't necessarily always want to hear the ADSR going on and off. While I was working on the patch. So the input of this multiplier sets the chance of a, a note being triggered. Um, and this random module is clocked by, again, the output of that switch. Uh, and it's this multiplier is being clocked by the output of that switch. And then they meet at this comparator. So every time the value, the random value is higher uh, than the multiplier, it, it goes low and doesn't produce uh, a, a gate um, out of the comparator. So. That might be another part of this patch that you want to look at if you've heard me talk about probability gates. This is a clocked version of that uh, that's, I think, really useful uh, for a lot of generative applications. But otherwise, this is just here to sort of proof of concept, right? Uh, not the thing I'm going to hang my hat on. Um, so again, I, I hope this is a utility that maybe some of you have been looking for uh, and is useful to you. Um, I'm really pleased as punch that I figured out how to do this after so long. Um, so anyhow, uh, once again, comparators save the day. Um, but yeah, this is me showing this thing off and hoping that it's valuable to you. So uh, have a good day.